The Three Musicians Once upon a time, there were three musicians. They had learnt from the same master, and when the master said that they had learnt all that he could teach, the three friends decided to go out into the world and try their luck. We shall stick together. We studied together, so we play together. Yes, brother, that is what we shall do. Who knows what the world holds for us? The three musicians traveled different countries and made a handsome living for themselves. Presently, they came to a village where they played marvelously at the village fair. Then they sat around with the villagers, talking and chatting, sharing the stories of their travels. The villagers, too, shared with them a strange story. Not far from here in the woods, there is a castle. They say that it is enchanted. The doors are open for anyone to enter, and the table is laden with the choicest food for anyone to eat. There is also a room full of the greatest treasures for anyone to take. But they say evil spirits live in the castle, and anyone who enters it comes out more dead than alive. Have any of you gone to the castle yourself? Of course not. We would never risk anything so dangerous. That night, when the three musicians were alone in their room, they could discuss nothing else but the enchanted castle. I want to see the place. Just imagine if everything they said was true. The choicest food, the greatest treasure, it will be a pity to come so far and not try our luck. Life has been kind to us so far. Maybe it will be kind to us in the castle, too. So, who will go first? I vote that the youngest of us goes first and so forth. That is a good idea. So first, he, then I, and then you. We each stay in the castle for one whole day and one entire night. Agreed. Agreed. So, the next morning, the trumpeter wished goodbye to his friends and set out with a tune in his heart. He reached the castle by noon. It was massive and beautiful. As soon as he touched the gates, they opened, and so did the doors of the halls. The trumpeter explored the gorgeous rooms and huge halls till he came to the kitchen. It appeared as though invisible men and women were doing the chopping, baking, cooking, as aroma of delicious soup, vegetables, and desserts filled the trumpeter with a longing to try the food. An invisible hand led him to a huge dining hall where the table was already laden with all the food he had seen in the kitchen. The trumpeter sat down to eat. But as soon as he was about to take a bite, a little man with a beard long enough to reach his shoes entered the hall and sat beside him. Hello, sir. <laughs> uh, after you. <laughs> the two of them sat eating silently. Suddenly, the dwarf dropped his spoon. The trumpeter bowed down to get it when the dwarf pounced on his back, clobbered him, and threw him out of the gates of the castle. <laughs> How dare you come here to steal my treasure? With a black and blue face, the poor trumpeter went back to his comrades. What happened to you? Do not go to the castle. It is evil. That night, so, what is to be done about it? I want to go and see for myself what is happening in the castle. I will go. So, the next day, the drummer set off to the castle. The gates opened for him too. He too explored the massive rooms and halls, went into the kitchen, and was led to the dining room. And just as he was about to eat, the dwarf came. Like he had done with the trumpeter, the dwarf 
dropped his spoon. The drummer bent down to get it. The dwarf pounced on him and threw him out of the gates. The drummer went back to his comrades. The place is evil. Don't go there, mate. It was the dwarf again, right? Yes. Exactly as you had said. In that case, I will go. Even after what happened to us? Do not worry. I shall not let the dwarf get the better of me. So, the next morning, the fiddler set off for the castle. He saw the exact same things in the palace and sat down to eat. The dwarf appeared, and as usual, he dropped his spoon so that he may pounce on the fiddler when he bent to retrieve it. But the fiddler was ready for him. Just as the dwarf pounced, the fiddler moved away and grabbed the dwarf. In the scuffle, the medallion around the dwarf's neck came into the fiddler's hand. The moment the medallion came into his hand, he started feeling really powerful, while the dwarf became very weak. <laughs> Give me back my medallion. No. Not till you tell me what the palace is all about. Oh, if you give my medallion back to me, I shall teach you about all my magic powers, and I have plenty of them. Then first teach me about them, and then I shall give you your medallion back. Deal? Fine. So... The dwarf took the musician to a strange basement with a passage so long that it seemed never ending. Then, suddenly, the dark passage opened out into a valley like none other than the fiddler had ever seen. It was clear that this place did not belong to our world. The dwarf led the fiddler to a river. The river gushed with such vigor that it was impossible to swim through it. But the dwarf tapped his wand in the water, and suddenly the water parted, revealing a pathway which the duo walked on and reached the other side. What lay beyond was a castle even more magnificent than the one they had come from. The dwarf led them in. Every chamber of the castle was laden with the greatest treasures one could have ever seen in the world. And then they came to a magnificent room with a humongous bed studded with gold and precious stones in which lay the most beautiful maiden there ever could have been. Who is she? She is the princess of the palace. She has been asleep for two hundred years because of a spell. A spell? It was thought that the spell would make the princess sleep and all the servants of the palace disappear so that the man who cast the spell could steal the precious treasures here. But the castle was already enchanted, such that when the princess sleeps, all her treasures remain stuck where they are. Seeing the dwarf's frustration at the treasures being stuck where they are, the fiddler realized that it was the dwarf who had cast the spell on the princess. So he decided to help her. How can the spell be broken? What? Now we both know who cast the spell on the princess, right? If you want your medallion back, tell me how to break the spell. Oh. There is a box under the princess's pillow. It contains the princess's wakefulness. Take the box, take it close to the princess's eyes, touch the medallion to it. It will open and the wakefulness will flow into her. Very well. Where am I? In your palace, your highness. You have been asleep for two hundred years. Ah, uh, has it been that long? You wanted my treasures! And he shall have none. 
Leave this land forever. But my medallion! I will give it to you when we reach the other side of the river. Till then, just to make sure you do not play a trick, I must have your wand too. The dwarf had no choice but to comply. He gave his wand to the fiddler. All three of them walked to the river. The fiddler touched the wand on it, and the waters parted. The dwarf walked on the passageway and reached the other side. But the fiddler and the princess did not follow. When the dwarf had reached the other side, the fiddler tapped the water again, and the river gushed as before. My medallion! Give me my medallion! Take it! But the wand I keep, so that you can never return. Thus, the clever fiddler drove the dwarf away, and then turned to the princess. Your Highness, I too must take leave of you now. Do stay for a few days. You saved my life, my kingdom, and brought us back from an eternal slumber into the beauty of life. Do allow me the honor of showing you my kingdom and our hospitality. Please, I request you. Yours is indeed a beautiful, surreal land. I would love to stay a while. So, the fiddlers stayed in the princess's kingdom. Eventually, they fell in love and lived happily ever after. As for the fiddler's comrades, the fiddler visited them again and brought them back with him. Together they played music and regaled the people of the land. The other villagers wondered where the musicians went, and when they did not return, they all said of the fiddler who had disappeared first. Oh, he's gone to play the flute. Yes, he's gone to play the flute. This became a proverb, and to this day it is said of anyone who set out to perform a task from which he never returned. <laughs>